used to be certain people that uh, would prefer to sh talk shop, talk f-stops, talk shutter speeds, and really what's a lot more important to me than that is to see the work and to really get excited about that. If there's a technical thing that I would like to know about a particular photograph, I'd, I would address it at that time, but what I'm really interested in doing is seeing the imagery rather than seeing the technique behind the imagery. Um, especially with, with the philosophy of keeping the technique very, very simple. I feel any communications problem can be communicated and solved in a tabletop situation. The avenues I've chose to, uh, to shoot in are uh, basically still life work, which keeps you in a small working area. And that's more or less the two by two philosophy. Uh, some ideas come in more grandiose scale and demand other skills from other different kinds of photographers. Where I feel my expertise lies is in, uh, in a much smaller controllable area. Terry, this year, instead of doing the calendar as we had done last year, where it's primarily historic material, this is going to be really dealing with international classics, and so it'll be primarily contemporary material. And we'll be starting with cowboy boots and teddy bears, and one of the things we think will be a really strong element will be baseball as one of those, because it's a classic in both cultures. Uh, I've had the good fortune of working on a project for now, f this is our fifth year, and it's a calendar for the American President Lines Company. And uh, in the pre-production meeting, we will discuss uh, different possibilities for photographic situations. OK. And, uh, I think that could be done without any big problem. Great. You think any problem getting props on that, Holly? Should be no problem. We'll do some research and find out where the um, equipment's made and see what colors it comes in, and like red. And I had the good fortune of studying under a guy by the name of Andy Rossetti, who's a very successful working commercial photographer in Cleveland these days. And Andy uh, had the good sense in teaching of, of showing heroes, and I think heroes are extremely important to have. Uh, he, years ago, turned me on to people like Edward Weston, uh, Irving Penn, and Phil Marco. Uh, unfortunately, today Phil Marco is shooting television only, so his uh, still life imagery is, is sort of... I really want to be startled and challenged by pictures. I want to be knocked over and taught and educated. In other words, there are pictures lots of photographers get formulaic, in which case they get known for a particular type of picture, and certainly interiors, that would be the trap. And you want to keep it interesting for yourself. You want to keep upping the ante, uh, making new problems, throwing curves at yourself in a funny way. So I really find that I have to see things freshly, forget about the preconceptions, uh, and uh, pretty much go after those, the, what I call the three M's, which are mystery, magic, and metaphor. A picture, I think, should have one of those qualities that shouldn't only be graphic. There is an important decision that each photographer makes, consciously or unconsciously, whether to photograph things exactly as they are or to rearrange reality to suit the needs of a particular composition or, by exposure, a particular light or just a personal preference. In this respect, Len Genschel is a purist, changing nothing, disturbing nothing, in the mansions he photographs, he's apt to find many objects covered with dust cloths or plastic. He may encounter modern objects totally out of context in their setting. Rather than remove them and work to create a shot of grandeur and opulence, Len leaves them and in so doing often creates shots that show a vanished life, a ghostly atmosphere. That is the mystery, the magic, the metaphor which Len observes and photographs changing nothing, not even the lighting. There's a decision I make which is not to bring in lights, to go with how it hits me over the head, okay? There's atmosphere, sometimes it's ghostly, sometimes it's eerie, sometimes it's deathly, but it's real and I love it and I respond to that particular kind of light. So I choose not to light it. I'll do a long exposure. 15 minutes is not uncommon when you're stopping down and getting, trying to get a lot of depth of field. And uh, those, as I call them, bulletproof negatives. I mean, sometimes, because with negative, it has a fantastic latitude, but you have to shoot for the shadows. 
so the highlights will really, really blast out. You can bring them back in the dark room, which is what I do, and really, really end up with some very, very dense negatives. But they're, they're beautifully printable, and they give me the character and the look of a place and a picture that I'm really after. I come across a room like the one upstairs that was closed and shrouded with sheets and plastic and for me had a wonderful quality of atmosphere and ghosts and that's what I want to get. I want to not move furniture or not move sheets or not open windows and change the lighting but respond to it the way kind of it responds to me and we have a dialogue together and that's magic. And Hopefully the film can do what I want it to do in those situations just by being faithful to what I saw, to what challenged me visually. <laughs>